welcome to the Leather Journey. We're going to continue our um, discussion of different aspects and pieces of leather. Um, you know, leather is not just the leather that we wear, but also the leather that we play with, whether it's a flogger or a paddle or, uh, or whatnot. But uh, tonight we are going to talk about another article of clothing. Uh, we talked a little bit about boots, and, I'm, and I'll, I'll pull out my collection of boots one, one night, and we'll sit down and we'll look at all the different leathers, and I'll talk about why one boot, I like one boot better than another boot, or what, you know, some of the advantages of, of a certain type boot over another boot. In fact, if I can talk Moodstone into pulling all of her boots out, we'll even look at some ladies' wear and some ladies' boots. But let's talk about pants tonight. And I don't want this to, to come across as um, in any way uh, opinionated. I'm just telling you what I've learned about leather pants uh, from being in the lifestyle for 20 years or so. Uh, and all leather's great. I can go into a, a biker shop and I can buy a, leather, a pair of leather pants and put them on and they feel good. Uh, but most of the leather that you're going to get out of the biker shop, uh, a lot of that leather comes out of Mexico, a lot of that leather comes out of Pakistan, and uh, if it's been tanned properly, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, just be aware of where that leather came from. Try to find out about the, the tanning process that was, that was used, and... Um, some leather is tanned with urine. Uh, if, a, if leather's been tanned with a urine process, then if that leather gets wet, it might smell, uh, it might smell like urine. Uh, so it, it's helpful to know where the, the leather came from, how the leather was tanned, if you can at all find that out. But let's talk a little bit about construction. And I don't, these are kind of unique uh, leathers and I don't know that you're going to want to run out and buy a pair like this because this pair was handmade by Savage Leathers before he went to Germany. In fact, I probably wouldn't have had these trousers made, but I got wind of the fact that he was going to get Germany and I didn't know if he was going to re return to the States. When I first met Savage, uh, it was one of the years at Black Rose. The Black Rose Convention had a big vending area. And, and Savage would usually always go down and vend. Uh, Savage had a place uh, in upstate New York, and he stayed in upstate New York for half of the year, and the other half of the year he would go to Germany to be with his spouse and would make leather and, and vend in Germany. And at some point he decided he was gonna move to Germany full time. And the year before he moved to Germany full time, I approached him at Black Rose and asked him to make me a pair of leather pants. So he took, literally took my waist measurement, took my inseam measurement, looked at me, and I asked him if he would design my leathers with a cod piece. So that's one of the things that makes my leathers a little bit unique. You don't see a whole lot of leathers made with a cod piece. Uh, mine was made with a cod piece, obviously I'm not gonna remove that for you, that's for private sessions with, uh, with Moodstone. But <clears throat> it does make it unique. The other thing I will say about leathers is you look at leathers and examine leather pants, uh, or you approach a leatherman to have a, a pair of leather pants made, is realize that the most of the leathers at the biker sh shops, you'll see that there's a seam at the knee, and there's a seam at the back of the knee, okay? That's because when the leather's laid out on a side of beef, the most efficient way to lay the pattern out for the pants is to, to put a, a seam at the front and at the back of the knee. When you lay out a pattern for a pair of trousers on a side of beef, and you lay it out with seams at the knee, there's less scrap. Well, if there's less scrap, that means the, the leather worker's apprentice uh, has less straps they have to make, less harnesses they have to make, less collars, 
because every piece of that leather, that side of beef, is used by the leather worker to make something, okay? It, it goes far, far beyond the trousers that you're wearing, okay? So if you look, and I don't know if you can see this in the video, uh, because I'm my own cameraman tonight, but my trousers aren't seamed in the front or in the back. That's one continuous piece of leather all the way down from uh, the waist to the hem. So to lay out a pair of trousers like this, the leather worker actually has to use both sides of the beef. They lay out one side of the trousers on one side, the other side of the trousers on the other side. And what that results in is a lot of scrap. So the poor apprentice that worked for Savage, Hillary, had a lot of cuffs to make, had a lot of harnesses to make, a lot of collars, a lot of small detailed work to use all that scrap up uh, because of the way Savage made his, his pants. So one of the, uh, you know, one of the, the things I always look at now that I own a pair of, of pants that were made by Savage is when I see a pair of trousers, the first thing I look for is the knee seam. If there's not a knee seam and you're on the East Coast, there's probably a pretty good chance those pants were made uh, by Savage at Savage Leathers. Uh, it, I won't say it was a signature of his pants, but all of the pants he made uh, did not have a knee seam. That, that was one of the things he did not do. So I had a friend uh, in the lifestyle that went by Tall Man. Tall Man was six foot 11. So when Tall Man had his leathers made by Savage, that was one big cow to be able to make a pair of trousers that long with no seam. So that's a little bit on, uh, on pants. The other thing I'll say about pants is some of the pants you buy, like in Wilson Leather or in a, a biker shop, will be lined. They'll have like a silk lining. Some people like a silk lining. I actually don't like my pants lined. I like the pant to be top grain on the outside and suede on the inside so that you can actually feel the leather uh, as you're walking in them. Uh, well, pants that are lined, you're not feeling the leather at all. You're feeling satin or silk or whatever they lined the, the, the trousers with. So I prefer no lining. Uh, I'm not going to say if you prefer a lining, that's wrong, that's your preference. But those are some of the, the things you have to look at. Uh, am I gonna have a lining, no lining? Am I gonna have pockets or no pockets? If you have pockets, it's a convenient place to put a pocket paddle in. Uh, no pockets, you get a better uh, derriere look. Uh, these leathers don't have pockets. I have leathers that, that do have a pocket. Um, this, what else is there to think about? Seams, no seams. Uh, what kind of, you know, how soft is the leather? Conditioning your pants. I try to condition my pants twice a year, at least every six months. If I'm going to an event and I want my leathers to look really good, then I'm gonna condition them right before I wear them to whatever high protocol event or whatever event that I'm going to, where I'm gonna be wearing my leathers. I will say that leathers tend to, uh, are hot as a top or a dominant. You're in the dungeon, you're working. Uh, you, you know, whoever you're playing with is wearing almost nothing and you're wearing your leathers. You're gonna sweat in your leathers. Uh, when I sweat in my leathers and I take them off, I turn them inside out and I hang them up and I let them air dry. I put them in, in an area where there's, there's good airflow and ventilation and let them ventilate out. Uh, if I need to, I'll saddle soak them to clean them uh, and dry them, let them dry out and then I'll recondition them uh, after I've saddle soaked them. Uh, I tend not to wear my leather pants if I know I'm gonna be in a real hot climate, hot or humid climate, uh, I tend to wear them when I know I'm in an air-conditioned space or I'm up north and it's colder. 
uh, but that's just me. If I'm down south and it's gonna be a hot, humid night, you're gonna see me in black uh, 501 Levi's uh, because the, the denim for me, it, it, it just, uh, it's more comfortable, uh, more comfortable wear. But some people don't mind sweating in their leathers. They like that feeling. They like the way the leather feels when it's uh, clinging to their skin. But that's just another aspect of leather pants I wanted to touch on briefly. There's a lot more we could talk about with leather pants. Uh, I like the big, the big snaps. Uh, at the waist, these are also snapped. Uh, some leathers have a zipper. These have the big button snaps. Uh, I have to watch my weight when I wear these. If I'm over 200, they don't really fit me real good. My ideal weight for these pant, particular pants is, is 195, so that's, that's what I like to maintain. Uh, other than that, I don't know what else to say tonight. Uh, if you have leather trousers, you have a different aspect on leather pants, uh, please share it in the comments below. Uh, part of the leather journey isn't just recounting my leather journey, but it's to give every, everyone out there that's viewing these videos an opportunity to share their knowledge and what their leather journey has been. Uh, and, um, and slowly over time, hopefully we'll build a little bit of, of online community, get to know each other a little better. And I'll learn some things too. Uh, I learned from the comments. Hopefully uh, you enjoy uh, what I'm sharing with you uh, in the videos. And keep watching The Leather Journey.